Hi, my name is Mike Beckwith. I am the uh, artist at Scene One Art. Um, I work in a lot of different medium. I've been learning things uh, constantly for the last few years as I've uh, grown as an artist and I love this stuff. I'm also a teacher professionally, um, so I naturally turn into teaching this stuff as well. So thank you very much for joining us here tonight. I'm very, very excited. Um, we're going to talk about a bunch of things. Feel free to jump in at any time and ask a question. Two different ways for that. You can either just unmute and ask, or you can write it in chat, and um, Karina will get that information to me and ask the question for you. A um, couple of things I wanted to talk about. First, I know that some of you don't have kits. So if there's anyone in there, uh, out there, who doesn't have a kit tonight, um, know that you can make this paint. It doesn't have to be the ready pour, okay? I figured for the purposes of this um, teaching, the ready pour stuff would be the easiest to work with, but it doesn't have to be the ready pour. You can buy tiny little artist loft paint, any acrylic paint that you can get from uh, even like Crayola, not tempura paint, acrylic paint. Um, and then you just mix it with water. And I use this stuff called Floetrol, which is a latex paint ex extender. Um, it's made to extend your wall paint so that you can paint walls a little bit more if you ran, run out just before you finish the wall. But it works great for this as well. Um, or you can just use water or uh, an acrylic medium. Um, there, I have a few right here that I will show you. So a Liquitex acrylic medium will work as well. Um, so will like Elmer's glue, believe it or not. PVA glue, which is basically the Elmer's glue that you get, works just fine. But you're going to get different effects depending on which mediums you use, right? So if you use Floetrol, you have a better chance of getting cells, right? Which are the little circles that you sort of see here, right? If you use the medium, it might not get the same effect. So a lot of this is going to be science. Like we get to experiment and see which works for the effect that we're looking for. Um, if you like the long stringy lines, PVA glue might be the one for you. Depends. Um, so I highly recommend giving this a try and regular acrylic paint that you can buy at almost any art store and a lot of other stores as well, works just fine. Next, you can pour on basically any surface. It doesn't even have to be flat um, if it can hold on to the paint and stick to it. Um, that's anything. I've made tables, I've made uh, clocks, I've made, um, you can pour, I've seen people pour over uh, mixers, like your stand mixers. Um, you can pour over anything you want. If it can, a vase, you can pour over the sides and let it dry. Works just fine. Um, it's a lot of fun. So you're only really limited by your, um, by your imagination. So we're going to get started today. If you don't have a kit, mixing is the probably the most important step. Get your paint to be liquid, almost like honey or molasses. So you can pour it and it comes out as a string, right? But it's not lumpy. As soon as it's lumpy, you don't want that. You want to mix it as best you can. But for those of us with, a, uh, with the kit, let's get started, shall we? All right. <clears throat> Any questions before I start out? I have a question, Mike. Great. Uh, so you mentioned that you can, uh, you know, pour over anything. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do, like, if you were to pour over, say, a glass or uh, a dish, would that dish be uh, safe to use or safe to, you know, put in the dishwasher or safe to put in the microwave, that type of thing? Great question. The answer generally is no. Um, if you're using something that is literally meant to be food safe, um, you have to take a few extra precautions. For example, those tumblers that people make that they like, they have a usually have a layer of resin and they're only going over the outside of them. Um, so the part that is the, touching the food is inside and is not painted over at all. 
Um, if you're doing a glass, if you um, have a glass and you're painting over the outside and the paint gets down to the edge down here, and that's the place where you drink, you're gonna need to have a covering over that um, so that when you wash it by hand, not microwave, not um, dishwasher safe, no. Um, when you wash it by hand, the, um, it's not gonna come off. And when you're drinking, um, you're not getting pieces of acrylic paint into your system, which is not a good idea. So generally, no. Um, for charcuterie boards and things, what I do is I, I consider the top side to be display and the back side to be cutting board. So that's how I work for it. Um, Great, thank you. You're quite well. Other questions? All right. Um, okay. Let's talk about the basics. The basics are get your paint so it's liquid, pour it onto a canvas, and then move it around and see what happens. <laughs> so usually, in order to get the fun effects that we do, you need something called a base coat. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick one of the colors that we have. Now, you want to pick a color that is fairly high contrast compared to the other colors. So for example, I have, I have white, I have gold, I have um, this teal, which is awesome, and I have a purple, and then I have these two dark blues. Now, this one's a little bit lighter than this one. Um, so I'm gonna go with the, the darkest of blues. And I think that would be a fun base coat color. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna pour it all across the canvas. And then I'm gonna take one of my handy dandy, exceptionally useful uh, popsicles, and I'm gonna spread it around and generally get it over the entire canvas. The reason I do this is so that when I pour the other colors on it, they have something to slide around. If you don't do that, the colors will pull underneath as it moves across the canvas, and you'll lose a lot of the fun effects that um, this style of painting can do. So pick the color that you want. White is a, one of my favorites. It is a, you can't miss with a good white base coat. Um, white and black tend to be the most popular among artists, but you can go with any color you want. You could even do a two-tone. That would be fine too. So if you wanted to say, have half of it be blue and half of it be white, totally fine. Now to do this, I'm going to take the top off entirely and I'm going to pour the paint directly on the canvas. And I'm gonna try and use as little as I need, but I want it to have that pillowed feel to it, right? Where, so instead of it being thin like that, where you can see the canvas through it, do you see that? I don't want that. I wanna spread it out. I don't wanna use a ton, but I also don't wanna see the canvas through it. So I'm gonna take my popsicle and I'm gonna move it around, okay? You could also pick up the canvas and just tilt it. Yeah. Should we have the canvas on, on elevated like you have on cups? So that is helpful, but not necessary 100%. Here's why I do it. Um, this process is messy. So you'll also notice that I have plastic on my table um, because you're gonna get paint on your table. Um, it's gonna happen. Feel free to get some paper towels now if you didn't know that beforehand um, and put some down underneath because the, the fluidity and the liquidity of the paint is going to slide over the sides, okay? So if you need to do that, do that. Um, the reason that I elevate it See right now, what he's saying, if you didn't notice, my painting is sitting on uh, four cups. What I use is I just I go to Wegmans and I get these little white, um, white plastic containers. You can also use these, uh, they work just fine. Um, so if you have four of those, I know I gave you what, like 20 of them. So if you have the kit, take four of these, that works great. When the paint falls over the sides, if it sticks, if it's touching the canvas when it dries, you'll have to like cut the paint off at the edge. 
So what this does is allows it to drip off so that it gets a clean edge on the side. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so so quick, a quick question, Mike. Do we just have two or uh, are we just stacking them on two pillars of the cups or, or on all four sides? Is I, it just... I put it on four. If you're putting on two, you're gonna, it's gonna fall over on you. Yeah, okay, so it's not a slant. It's, it's, it's just a base, got yeah, it, thank you. Want, you. You want it to be as close to a uh, level as you can make it. I understand oh. that tonight we're not gonna worry about it too much. Um, this is sort of practice, but um, in general, when I'm doing a painting that I'm hoping I'm gonna sell, for example, I am mm -hmm. making my, my space as 100% perfect level as possible. I literally take a leveler and I go in all different directions <laughs> and then I don't touch that space. Um, yeah, making it level is really important. If you don't make it level, what'll happen is the paint will all slide to one side. Whichever side is the lowest, all of the paint will just slide towards that side and you'll, the, the, um, the effect that you had that you loved when you stopped and let it dry, you will lose because it will all go. So like, it'll stay here. And then all of a sudden it just slowly moves this way and it'll happen like infinitesimally. So when you're there in person looking at it and you're like, this is great, I love it. Um, and you walk away, you won't notice that it was sliding, right? Because it's happening very slowly because the paint is thick. Um, but over the 24 hours or so that it takes to dry, probably a little bit more. My paintings usually take about 36 to 72 hours. Um, the, the paint will slide while it's still wet. Um, and then you'll lose the, the effect that you had that you liked. All right, other questions? That was a good question, by the way. How thick should we make this? How thick should you make it? Great question. Um, the answer to that question is as thin as you can make it so that you don't see the canvas. See how the edges here, see the canvas through it? I don't know, right, right here. Mm -hmm. That is what you don't want. But you'll only worry about that most near the center because the stuff at the edges is gonna get dumped over the side, okay? So, Notice that my edges are fine. Like that, my or my edges are are not good. They're um, you're seeing the canvas. It doesn't go over the side, right? Um, it, it it's got this white all the way around it. Like it's not perfectly covered. Doesn't matter, right? The white in, uh, in the center, however, it looks like pure paint. That's what you want, okay? But you don't want to try. You don't want to use a ton of paint to do it. So it's a it's a, it's a balance, right? So we're, we're gonna try and make our, uh, our kit go as long as we can go um, and get as many uh, paintings out of these, these paints as we can. Um, so it's a, a bit of a balancing act. All right, so I had a little bubble there. I'm gonna pop off. Not a big deal. Again, it's probably gonna slide off to the side. All right. The first one I wanted to show you is a pretty simple concept called a dirty pour, okay? So what that means is I'm going to take, I've already got the cup dirty, but it's on the outside, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to take the colors that I have, and I'm going to pour them in this cup. Now, I can have them be striated so that it's like oil and water, and you have very clear delineations between the paints. It's like the white paint is down here, then the purple, then the, the gold. Or I can just sort of squirt them in however I want and they will be very mixed. Either comes up with some interesting effects. So pick one of those two ways and um, go ahead and put in a little bit on the bottom. So you're gonna wanna, I'll show you. I'm gonna start with gold here and I have just a covering in the cup, right? It doesn't even come up above the, the first line. It barely fills that. Then I'm gonna pick another color. I think the gold and the purple looks really good. You can pick any colors you want. Uh, and I'm going to pour in approximately the same amount, but 
proportion is part of this art. So um, knowing that you want a lot of gold versus very little purple might be part of the effect that you're looking for. Now, I love white. It is the highest contrast in the set that I have. So I'm gonna be using a good bit of white here. White also has some other interesting properties in that it is usually the densest of pigments, which means that as a paint is liquid, the densities matter because the paints will rise and sink based on how heavy they are. Um, every paint is gonna be different, but the titanium white tends to be the heaviest. All right, so I'm gonna put in a little bit of this, of the darker blue. Now again, I'm not being real scientific here. I'm just sort of squirting some in because getting it mixed up with the other paints is part of the fun. Then I'm going to use this teal, which is gorgeous. Love it. Cute, cute color. I like it. Now, this is probably enough, but I'm going to go a little bit more with purple and a little bit more with the white because those are the two I think are going to look the best against this blue. And then lastly, the gold again. All right, let's talk about metallic. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, can you hold that cup up to the camera again? Sure. Uh, yeah. Okay, so then it's, they're not, they're just sort of swirled in there. They're not mixing. Okay, yeah, great. They're not, but yeah, they are mixing a little bit. So you can see okay. from the side, hopefully. Um, um, yeah. Right, they are mixing a little bit, but not mm -hmm. a lot. Okay, and that's good, right? Like look at those lines in the cup. Even that looks interesting, right? Yeah. Um, Let's talk for a second before we actually do the next part. And there are two reasons for this. One, it's good to let the cup sit and let the paints mix themselves for a little bit. But let's talk about metallic versus uh, non-metallic and opaque versus non-opaque paints. Um, some of the paints that you will get are metallic pigments like, um, like the gold that I have here. Those metallic pigments are almost always going to be an extremely opaque pigment, meaning that you won't see anything through it. If it's the top color, nothing underneath it will be seen. But some of them, like, for example, this, this color, uh, this nice light green from Artist Loft, this is a bit um, <clears throat> translucent. So it will mix more readily with the colors around it but it will blend with them instead of being a clear differentiated color. So like right now, you can see that white strongly differentiated. You can see the gold strongly differentiated, but if you notice the purple and the teal are starting to blend already, right? That's a perfect example of the slightly translucent versus opaque paint. As you know, your paints and you start practicing and use, getting used to this, um, you will learn which paints work which ways. Um, white tends to be on the opaque side. Metallics are almost always opaque. Um, and everything else is variable depending on where you buy it from and how much pigment is in the paint. Um, it will also say frequently on the bottle, like this is an opaque color or not. Um, so that's fun. All right. So we've let this settle for a little bit. And actually, you can sort of see right here, the white is a little bit higher up, the purple's down, the gold's on the bottom. They're still pretty striated. That's good. Okay. There are two ways. Well, I'm going to teach you three ways we can do this. And you get to pick which one you want to do. All right. Either you can do something called a flip cup, which is to take your cup and put it over your canvas and then just go <laughs> and hope the paint stays on the canvas <laughs> and then let it drip down the sides. Okay. That's one. All right. flip, flip cups are a lot of fun. Question. I heard somebody. Now we were just laughing. Okay. <laughs> Second uh, is to take that exact same cup, just like this one and just pour it. Okay. That's called a dirty pour. 
All right, you don't, you're not doing anything specific with the pour, you're just pouring it onto the canvas. You can pour it in a puddle in the middle, you can travel it around, depends, okay? Or you can do something called a tree ring pour. A tree ring pour is you take your cup and you carefully work in little tiny circles as you pour slowly, okay? At the very end, right before the last drop, you put your, your hand in and you take it away. Of the ones that I just told you, that one is the most complicated. The tree ring pour makes tree rings of color. And it's very interesting. It's a lot of fun. So pick which one you want to work, uh, you want to try. I am probably going to try the tree ring pour so that you can see what it looks like. Um, and I'm also going to get a drink real quick. You got your stuff in here. You mm -hmm. How are we doing? Good? We're good. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, now I can also pick which side of the cup I pour from. Whichever side I pour from, that color will be the first out. Does that make sense? So pick whichever color you want. You could go from the lines. You, so you have a whole bunch of colors at the same time. You could pick it like, in my case, I've got a ton of teal up top. I could just pour straight from that teal and have it, the teal be the outside color. It is entirely up to you. So I, I'm gonna pick this little piece of hair off the cup <laughs> and keep that out of my painting. And I'm going to slowly show you what a tree ring pour looks like. And yes, slow is good. Mike, are you rotating in a circle as you're as it's pouring out, or yeah. okay, it's a very tight circle. Very, okay. very, very small circles. It's barely a circle at all. All right, I didn't even get everything from the cup. So, whoop, and I got my, got my elbow. All right, now you notice it's moving off to one side. Okay, that's gonna happen. It says my table is not perfectly leveled here. But what I can do, is just pick it up and slide it. Now this is where your base code is really important. Right? If you have this base coat, this nice circle that you have that's so pretty is going to stay a circle. Whereas if you didn't have a base coat, it would roll under and the top paint would like, I don't know how to say it other than it rolls under. Um, like it, it sort of works like a, a big tr rolling truck. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking of the... Um, the street um, machine that I can't think of the name, but the the big huge rolling pin machine that drives and it keeps pushing it under what? Steamroller. Steamroller. Thank you. Why can I not come up with that name? Uh, it's a long day already. Um, and as you see, it's going to start stretching out. Now I'm using my hand here to try and keep the colors on the piece as much as possible. When it goes over the edge, what will happen is the paint will get stuck to that area and won't move as much anymore. So I'm trying to keep it on the canvas as much as I can before um, I let it start rolling off to the edge. And I'm always gonna try and slide the paint back to the center. Um, so what you get is this big mass of paint right where that circle is in the center, right? So the heaviest portion, because canvas is, um, it, it, it will sink and it will sag a little bit. Um, the heaviest portion will always be in the center. So you wanna come back to the center. And what that does is it helps keep the really cool look that you created um, 
it will keep it intact. I'm going to go down to this corner. And you can stop whenever you want. When you see that you've got something you like, stop. Okay. And then you'll put it down and then and then you wait a long time until it's dry. For this kind of painting, it's gonna be a while because the paint is really thick. All right, so I like that side. I'm now gonna turn it around a little bit. Again, I'm gonna try and keep as much paint on the canvas as I can. Now this canvas, I prepped a little bit by, I don't know if you could see it. I have um, blue tape underneath, um, it's not necessary. Um, but it's something that I like to do to keep my, the back of my painting a little bit more clean. Um, so that when I, if I eventually sell the piece, it goes on the wall and doesn't, doesn't work out. But in the beginning, Ooh, that was good. how are yours coming out? So far, so good. Uh -huh. I see some thumbs up. And uh, some some nods. If you <laughs> yeah, I can't see you for the record. Um, now, can you see the difference in the wet paint between the gold and the other colors? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things that you can really see the difference in with the the opaque versus not opaque. Um, metallic also has that pearlescent sheen, um, which is really, really pretty. Um, so I love, love, love working with the, the metallics. Um, they are a ton of fun for me. And you just slowly slide it around while getting your house completely covered in paint. <laughs> So I like this gold with the blue edge is the thing that I like the most here. So I'm trying to slide a little bit of the other edge off the side while keeping that gold, which I just love. All right. So I have come to a spot where I like, I like this, right? Now, because my hands are covered in paint and I had my hands right up to the edge, Right here, I have some other uh, colors of paint that are mixed in. It's no longer that, that um, sharp, dark blue that I like. And I sort of want that to go away. So what I can do to fix that is take that dark blue, which is over here. Um, I'm going to take off my, um, this is why I gave you a bunch of uh, gloves. I'm gonna take off my gloves, put them over there. This is, double check, this is the right paint. Is that the right paint? That is not the right paint. This is the right paint, okay? There we go. And I'll just pour it in the spot where the other colors are. And then I'll take my popsicle again and just push those other colors over the edge. Go away, you are ruining my painting. So are you uh, Jacques Cousteau, Jacques Cousteau there or Pepe <laughs> Le Pew or? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm just a weird teacher. Um, yeah. Who was once an actor and occasionally likes to do bad accents. So I apologize for my horrible accent. <laughs> There we go. All right, now, this was the part that I couldn't um, give you in a kit, and I just put paint right on my head, didn't I? <laughs> um, nah. This is the part that I didn't give you in a kit. If you are able to apply a little heat to it, this paint currently has bubbles in it. Um, the bubbles are color because the color is um, intermixed, right? And you're gonna get bubbles in it. 
right? Just like it's a, um, a, a can of soda. It's got bubbles that are slowly rising to the top, but the, the paint is so thick and viscous that it, if you don't help it along, the bubbles will never actually make it to the top. And in some cases you can literally see them. So I have a bubble here, the bubble there, bubble there, another one there, um, a third here, another there. These are all bubbles of paint. Cool. If, if you have um, a, like a candle lighter, right? And the ones with the long, um, the long handles um, so that you're away from the flame, you can get close to the paint with that candle lighter and it might uh, heat up the bubbles. And when you heat bubbles, what happens? They pop. So they're gonna rise to the surface and then they're gonna pop. So you're gonna get um, more cells when you do this. I couldn't send home a torch and I wasn't gonna send home a lighter either because um, I didn't know who was gonna be doing this, but I wanted to show you this process anyway. In my case, I use a torch and at this point, be very, 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 very careful, please. And thank you. But I turn it on. <laughs> I'm going to take this moment to interject a little disclaimer. Yep. Kids, do Probably not do point. this without your parents' yep. permission yep. and supervision. Yep. Um, <laughs> Mike, would a hairdryer work instead? Would yes, it work the I same did. way? So, all right. Interesting. This paint didn't have as much bubbles in it. Each paint is going to be different. And I hadn't worked with these before. So uh, you see them a little bit showing up, but not as much as I'm used to. So that's interesting. You get more when you use the flow troll. Anyway, um, to answer your question, yes, you could do it. The problem is a hairdryer is meant to blow a lot of air hard, right? And what will happen is your paint is going to slide right off your canvas. Um, so I actually have a hairdryer hanging on the wall that I occasionally use to blow paint around. Um, so instead of just pouring it on the canvas, I might plop it on the canvas first and then take my hairdryer and move it around using the hairdryer. Um, but it won't work for this particular purpose. Instead, what I recommend is a uh, heating element. So this is a little heat gun. They're like, 20 bucks on Amazon. Um, they do not, well, they could burn you for sure. So be careful. But the, the metal element in here is the, the hot thing. And unless you're literally like, it's, you'll be fine for the most part. Um, this will be able to pop your um, bubbles just fine. Um, and is generally not uh, a hard enough airflow to change the, uh, the painting that you just made. Um, all right, does that answer your question? Yes, I hope. Yes. Okay. Um, I also like the torch um, because I can get closer, further. Um, I can work an area differently. Like there are, there are a number of things you can do differently with torch, but if you have um, their cooking torches, you know, the little, um, the tiny little ones that you use for like, for cooking, they're literally for cooking. Um, those work too. So there you go. All right. I mean like the, for creme brulee, those type? Exactly, yes, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah, All right. I wanna give people time to ask any other questions and settle their own paintings. How are your paintings coming along? Good. Good? Mm-hmm. Sarah, yours, yours looks very lovely. Uh, I'm gonna come I can't see everybody's. <laughs> I want to see. Okay. Woo, I like it, Saren. How about Keisha? Oh, wow, that's stunning. Oh, I missed it, Keisha. I put it back. Oh, David Tigers is really cool, too. Nice. Keisha, that's awesome. I, it's just listed as iPhone, but iPhone, yours is neat. Well done. <laughs> Lewis family, I like it too. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I love the, I love the, um, you've got some good colors there. Well done. Oh, that's pretty. Maria, very cool. And they're all different because you came up with different, um, you, the, 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 um, 
the kits are all different colors. That's exciting, very cool. All right, so once you've got it to a place where you like it, set it up so that it can sit without being touched and preferably without being like, I don't know, if you have a cat, for example, the cat's not gonna come near it. Uh, <laughs> you're not gonna get like little dust particles raining down. So mm. I use, I had almost all the things on camera, but not all of them. I will use like the, the boxes that you get from like pizza delivery guys and I will put them over top, right? So that they're not actually touching, um, but they are keeping my painting uh, safe and dust free. But find a place where you can put that painting that it can just be left for 24 to 72 hours. Um, I'm gonna put on another pair of gloves real quick and move this over to the side. And then when you get a chance, I have a question. Sure, yeah, go, go. I just came in cause um... I was late for something. So can you give me a two minute recap of how you did that? Sure. Okay. So what I did was I took my canvas. I picked one color that was high contrast. In my case, it was a dark blue. I poured that color over most of the canvas so that you couldn't see the canvas through it. Then I put my other colors into a cup like this and poured onto my canvas. I got these lines like this by making tiny little circles. It's called a tree ring pour. Um, and those tiny little circles move the colors into these uh, striated lines, which are very pretty. Um, I like them, but you could just take the cup and flip it over on top. You could, with all of your colors inside of it, you could um, take that cup and just pour it, whatever you want. There's lots of different ways to do this. And one of the best parts about the art is that there's really no wrong way. There's a lot of experimentation involved. Um, so that answer most of your questions, I hope. Yes, how many co colors did you have inside the cup? Good question. I had one, two, three, four, and then a little bit of the base coat, so five. Okay. I I used most of the colors of the kit. I figured I had the colors from the kit. Let's see what, how they look together. Um, all right, now I'm gonna pick this up, move it off to the side. Put it in the garage. Yeah, yep, that could work. So I, I noticed on your, on your example there, you didn't, when you poured the paint over the base coat, mm -hmm. you didn't completely cover the canvas. You left some of the base coat exposed. My, right. wife, did the same. My wife did the same. I chose to cover the entire, or try to cover the entire canvas with, sure. is there, I guess there's no right or wrong, but I mean, typically when you do this, how, how does that work out? It depends on the effect you're going for. So there, like, I, like I was explaining with the, the different ways of pouring, there are lots of different techniques that give you different effects, right? So I like the effect of these um, strong striation and right. having that strong striation with the, um, background negative space is a good look and it was part of the effect that I was going for. You might just want the lines, 100% of the painting, and that's up to you, right? Mm -hmm. So the answer is, this is personal artistic taste. Right, okay, thank you. Yeah, all right, so I am going to put down four more um, cups. Actually, I can use these, all right? And I'm going to get my second canvas. Now, I suspect some of you were doing two at once already, correct? So are you out of canvases? No, not me. Okay. We're, we did one at a time. Okay, some of you might be out of canvases. If you are, you can pour on almost anything. As long as it's strong enough to hold the, um, the paint, so like paper won't work, right? Because Sick. paper will just crumble under the paint. But um, wood, like the, the star that I gave out, um, these are for, you know, holiday ornaments of some kind um, and can be whatever you like. They, they, you can pour on almost anything. I have, so I got- Sorry, how about cardboard? 
like because it's waxy. Yeah. Okay. Like paper, cardboard is going to soak up some of that uh, liquid in the um, in the paint and will probably crumble. Um, but a, a small piece of wood. Um, don't try. Don't try. If you have a plate that you don't want anymore, you could pour on a plate, right? Um, some people literally take the toilet bowl cover, like the, the the top of the toilet bowl, and they pour on that. Go ahead, totally fine, right? You're not going to eat off your toilet bowl cover, so it works just fine. Um, so, like, you could pour on almost anything you want. Um, again, it just has to be strong enough to take the paint and let it dry to it. Um, so I'm going to start another painting and this time Mike, I have, I have another question before we start. So I know you'd said yeah. we could, we should just gently move it around like this. What if I shake it? Is that not a good practice to just hasten it up? No. Gonna, okay. So what's going to happen is, uh, what's going to happen is you're going to come out with a completely different effect. You might like it or you might not. I have no idea if depending on what your artistic style is, you will like it or not, right? Yeah. Try it, right? Go for it. Like this is a lovely, fun process of being creative. If you want to try a different way of pouring it than I am doing it, please go right ahead. Um, all right, so I'm gonna teach you my personal favorite version of pouring, the one that I probably use the most often. And I'm going to start with a white base coat, okay? Now, I'm only choosing white because I said this at the beginning for the person who came in late. Um, it is a high contrast color and it creates some pretty strong uh, images when you're, when you're working with it. Um, and I'm going to move this paint around, probably gonna need more, I don't think I've poured enough. Um, I'm going to move this paint around and cover most of the canvas. So I love working with white. I love working, and you notice I'm getting a little bit of other colors because there was a little bit of paint on this a stick and on my hands. That's fine. Um, if I have a spot where I want it to be perfectly white, I can fix that later. Um, I tend to work with white and black a lot because again, they're really dramatic when you pair them with the other colors and the effects tend to be beautiful. Um, so that again, that's part of my personal artistic taste. Um, but the blue right here, like I love how this one came out. Um, and that's not a color that I normally use. Um, so again, experimentation, go for it. Try different things. I am never doing the same thing twice. Right, putting a little bit more. You want it to look slightly pillowy again, because this is a base coat. And the purpose of the base coat is for the other color paints to slide around on top. All right, now, instead of pouring all of the colors into a cup, this time I'm going to pour the colors directly from the bottle onto the canvas. Now, I can do this because these are ready to pour colors. Um, if they were not ready to pour, I would have to mix up my paint and put it in these cups and then pour it from the cup. But because these are ready to pour, I can just bloop. And I'm gonna make a line straight down the middle. Okay, um, it's not a lot of paint. It's really not, but I'm going to go right over the top of it with my second color too. And then a little bit of a third. And I can stop at any time when I think I've got a good mix of colors. I love this gold and the gold of over there looks so beautiful. I'm like, all right, I need to have gold in this. Like I said, metallics are my, my jam. I love, I love metallics. Um, all right, and then last but not least, I'm gonna pour some white. Now I'm already running out of white because <laughs> I used it in the last one and I used it as the base coat. So the base coat tends to be the, the thing that uses the most amount of paint. 
Um, all right. Once I've got it on, and there are two ways that I can move this paint around to create good effects. All right. I can blow it. I can use a hairdryer. I can use a um, straw. I can use my mouth and just blow it. I can, or I can take this and swipe. So I'm going to show you the swipe first. I'm going to start from the white and just go out. And again, start from the white and go out. Now, for this one, since this is intentionally a, a teaching piece, I'm going to use both techniques on the same piece. Normally, I would just use one because they are very different in style. But And then I'm going to swipe again on the side to see if I can create a similar effect on the bottom. I'm trying to think of composition as I go. Now, I like the center. It sort of looks like a flower. Hopefully you can see that fairly well. But I'm not a huge fan of the swipe. So, all right. The reason that you swipe is because you are, it's so, I, I think of it like making a crepe. When you're making a crepe, you're folding over the, the bread on top of itself, like over and over again, as you're thinning it out and making a crepe. Um, the swipe does the same thing. And what that does is it, forces the paints to bubble and to push it through each other to go up and down, right? And when you swipe frequently, you will get these amazing cells that pop through, usually after you've applied some heat. Um, <laughs> what? Are we laughing at me? I'm blowing hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? We're not blowing hard enough. We're not blowing. It does take a good bit of, uh, I have been yeah. called low hard in the past. Um, what can I say? <laughs> if you're um, asthmatic, don't, don't, don't overtax yourself. <laughs> yeah. You might want to bring in the hairdryer at that point. Yeah, I'm getting a little dizzy from trying to blow. <laughs> I'm getting a straw. <laughs> With... With uh, with these paints, it's not as big a problem, but depending on what you're using inside the paints, for example, uh, Floetrol is a little bit more on the toxic side um, than the, the paints that we're currently using. Um, you definitely want to have a layer of protection and keep that in mind. Working in a space that's good ventilation, um, keeping, keeping yourself aware that your, your breathing is important and that sometimes fumes can ha come from this, especially when using uh, the heat sources that I was talking about. Um, you can make fumes with that as well. Um, other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, is, it, uh, is, uh, is it possible to make bubbles without heat? To make bubbles without heat, yes. Um, there are a couple of ways to do that. The first way and the most common way is to use uh, literal oil and water. Um, so these are water-based paints and you're mixing water with them. If you mix silicone in with it, what will happen is the silicone will create a layer in between the two paint colors and prevent them from mixing. So you will get very strong delineations between the colors. The problem with silicone, the problem with silicone is that it will um, like rise to the top and create this slight sheen over it. Um, and if you're putting, for example, I sometimes um, cover my paintings with resin. The resin will move away from the silicone. So there are good parts and bad parts to it. 
Um, but using a silicone, using things like, um, uh, I've heard people use dish soap, right? Um, there, there are a bunch of different ways you can make an effect, but you're basically um, leveraging the science of oil and water, how those two will always force away from each other um, and creating that forced separation in your paints. So you add uh, the dish soap, I mean, like silicone within the paint or yep. separately? Uh, you, would, you, would do it, you would do it directly in the paint that you're pouring under the canvas. Sure. Now, okay. Don't do it in the base coat and, okay. and don't do a lot. It's literally like a drop. I'm not kidding. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. So if, if you're pouring a, like three, four, five drops, that's already too much. Okay. It does not take much. I actually have some silicone here and I have a literal dropper where I'm just like, Whoop, and that's it. Um, right. Great question. Other questions? Mm, thank you. No? All right. So I love the swipe, but I don't know if the swipe is going to work very well with these particular paints because these paints, as we learned with the first one, don't create the bubbles as much. So we're going to try and apply some heat and see if I can pull that bubble from it. Karina, would you mind grabbing the um, um, torch? <coughs> I'm going to grab a drink. Yeah, more purple. Lightheaded now? I am. What's up? Uh, I'm asking my wife if she got lightheaded from all that. <laughs> from all the <laughs> going through a straw to get. All right. Hold on a moment as I apply something here. All right. Again, I'm barely moving this over. It's barely touching the canvas, um, even going above the canvas. Yeah, this, this paint doesn't create cells very easily. Interesting. Yeah, if I were doing this and I'd use the flow troll as the medium, I, you'd be seeing tons of bubbles popping up. But since this is a different medium in the paint itself, it's not doing that. And that's okay. So that's just something that you need to know when you're using that paint so that you can um, plan, create the effect that you want. So now I know that the Dutch pour, which is the blowing part, um, that creates more of the effect that I'm interested in than the swipe, okay? So the swipe here, you can sort of see the little bubbles in it, right? Like that white one right there, another one there. Um, there, there are a couple over here. They're there, but they're pretty small. Um, they're, they would be way bigger and far more uh, intense if I had used Floetrol. So instead, I'm gonna try blowing the paint around a little bit. Can you see it? I hope, yeah, okay. And you get these really cool lines that I think are fun and interesting. Now I'm trying to leave the negative space on purpose um, because that again, creates that drama. So it feels sort of like water. Now, if I don't like it, I can take a popsicle, slide the paint right off, and start over. You've lost all your paint, but you still have a canvas. If I don't like it after it's dried, I just paint right over top of it. And again, I've lost the paint from the first time around, but I didn't like it, so who cares, right? Um, you can always just start over. If I wanted to, and I had enough of the white, and I wanted to create more white space, I could pour white, right? I could take the, the popsicle, slide the sides or the sections I don't like right off the painting, 
and then fill that with the color that I want. Um, I could take a paintbrush to it afterwards, or I could do this and just pull it through to create little wispies. Whatever you like. This is, again, I, I just think it's so much fun. I started doing this a bunch of years ago now, and I was like, wow, this is, this is cool. And I, the first few I made were horrible in my opinion, <laughs> like, but I had so much fun doing it that I was just like, I need to do this again. And I did, and here we are. So now I'm just going around the edges and trying to make sure that I've covered all the, the sides. I can just pull it down with my finger maybe. I, I, I have taken, I don't have an art degree for the record. Um, I, I have degrees in English and theater and a bunch of things, but I don't have an art degree. But I've taken quite a lot of art classes um, because I was an adult and I was like, oh, I can audit these. So let's audit. And I showed up and I took the classes and I loved it. Um, and one of the things that my professors would tell me was, the canvas is not a color. You need to actually have color on your canvas as opposed to leaving the canvas itself. Um, and I personally am like, I think that's a personal choice, but that's, that's, that's up to you. So I, I do try to cover each piece of the canvas um, with some form of the paint. But again, personal preference. All right. So what do you think? How's yours coming out? Neat. Yeah. It's can you see Sarah's? That was nice. No, hold on. I'm coming around. <laughs> oh, please don't fall. <laughs> no. Oh, you had no your falling. own canvas. No that's falling. a nice, that's a nice round canvas. I like it. Saren, very cool. Oh, neat. iPhone. Okay. <laughs> that's interesting, iPhone. I, again, I don't know. <laughs> I, I would say your name if I could, but that's very interesting. Yeah. Anyone else want to share? How about the yeah. tigers? How did you? Oh, cool. Well, I, can't touch. I, I chose the first method both times. I like the, the pouring method better. Sure. Uh -huh. And I like, and I chose to cover the canvas with the color. I think that I like that effect. I think it's kind of cool. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, Again, it's all personal preference, right? There, there are no hard and fast rules. They're just understanding the medium and knowing what composition you're trying to go for, right? So like if I can create the striated effect of the tree ring pour and that's what I want, okay, then, then I do it this way. That's the only difference. Otherwise, play. Um, and last but not least, we have our ornament. Um, I think it's just fun. So it's a tiny little piece that I thought we could try um, that you're going to have to do twice. So here's the hard part about this ornament. When you pour it, you can only pour one side at a time. So What's going to have to happen is you're going to have to come back after this is dry in you know 72 hours, 36 hours, however long it takes. And you're going to have to pour the sec the second side. All right, because of the size of this, yeah, that's much better. Okay. I'm going to take one of the larger plastic containers and use that as my base. All right. The reason I'm doing this is so that it covers most of the inside of the star, but the star still overhangs the, the 
um, cup just slightly so that the paint has space to go off the edge and dr drip down without sitting right next to it and drying right there and then having a piece of skin that you have to like cut off. Okay, and for those of you who didn't hear before, when I say skin, the, the acrylic paint will dry like a plastic piece. And so like all these little bubbles uh, that are, are drips that are on my uh, table, they're gonna dry. And when they do, you're gonna be able to peel them right up off the table, okay? That's part of the reason why I use this plastic because I can pick up the plastic and I can peel it up a little bit um, and it works quite well. But um, that skin, you don't wanna have directly connected to your piece because if you, um, if you pull it up, you might rip the paint off of your ornament and destroy the effect. Um, so you want to have the edges over the top so it can drip. All right, I think purple is gonna be my base coat. So I'm gonna pour some purple here. Get it around all sides, but this is much smaller, so that's probably way too much, but that's okay, because it'll just slide off the side. And I'm gonna move it around. And I'm gonna cover all the sides. All the little triangles. I feel like Bob Ross when I speak like that. All the little triangles. Happy little triangles. All right. Uh -huh. There we go. Now, I really liked the. Um, Dutch pour. So I'm going to do a Dutch pour again, but I'm just going to put these in the center. So I've got that, I've got some blue. I've got definitely like the gold, and I want some white because the white is going to be important here. Okay. And then I'm going to put a little bit of purple back in the center. All right. Now I'm just going to Dutch pour and blow it around. That's cool. <laughs> That's so cool. What do you yeah. think? It looks like a like a sun, a star. Hey. Oh, well, duh. <laughs> the star? Wow. <laughs> um, no, I mean like solace, <laughs> a star. In terms, <laughs> of, in terms of my vocabulary tonight, you know, looking for steamroller, for example, uh, <laughs> I completely understand that sentence. So, um, all right, I like I like how this is coming out, but I. I want the edges, the tips of the triangles to have a little bit more color. So I'm gonna try them. I'm with you, Mike. I really like the effect of that gold standing out. Yes, I love the gold. And actually, so I like the gold so much and I've got a bit too much negative space here. I can just pour some more in and then blow it around for a while, right? Like, again, there aren't really rules here. There are just, what do you think? And play with it. Yeah. Yeah, just a little extra there against the negative of the purple, I think was really nice. Now, remember that you're gonna have to do this again so hopefully you won't run out of these colors. Um, like I'm probably got enough white in here for the second side, but just barely. Um, yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna let these dry. And ooh, wait, I have just enough to do a special one. Uh, 
All right. So I wasn't planning to do this, but I have leftover paint. So you can never leave leftover paint alone. You got to use it, right? Um, so this is a tile. Like you can buy it at Home Depot and Lowe's. Like <laughs> um, exactly what it is. I use them to make the coasters because they're perfect for using alcohol ink on top because you need a non-porous surface for alcohol ink um, because it's basically the same stuff as is in your Sharpies. Um, and, but it works with acrylic pouring. So I told you about a flip cup. So let's do a flip cup. Now, all that paint was up here. It's gonna slowly drip down the sides and we'll eventually make it on to the tile. Then I'm gonna pull that cup up and we'll move it around and see what comes out. And it's a surprise every time. And it does take a while because it's, the paint is pretty busy. While we're waiting and we're wrapping up, anybody have any questions for me, comments? Nothing in the chat. Okay. Okay. This was low. Your hands are covered in paint. I get that. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead, Keisha. What did you say? I said this was loads of fun. I really enjoyed myself. Awesome. I'm so glad you were able to join us. I always have fun doing this, but it's even more fun when I get to share it with others. So if I did something like this again, uh, you'd be interested? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, a lot of fun. Okay, good to know. David, did you try the, uh, it looks like you tried the straw method this time. <laughs> I did on the star. Okay. Yeah, use it on the star. <laughs> yeah, because it was easier to glue on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you tell them. <laughs> yeah, it came out, it came out, the star came out nice. I like, I like how they all came out, actually. <laughs> I like this floor. I think it came out great. Not enough gold in this, so I'm putting more. Like I said, my personal thing is the metallics. I love the metallics. So I just threw it around top. And that's how it comes out. Okay, I have a question. Yeah. Um, do we have to put something over these to protect it? The answer is it depends. So if you are in a space that, for example, has cats or a shedding dog, then yes, yes, you do. If you are in a space with kids or a high amount of dust, for example, a garage that has sawdust or something, then yeah, you probably should. Um, if you are in a, in a house with no little kids and no uh, dust particulate matter in the air on a general basis, then nope, no you don't. Um, but you might end up with, I mean, I've had bugs fly in and die there. <laughs> I've had uh, hair that, I mean, not mine obviously, but someone's <laughs> come in and land in it. I've had dust particles that I, eh. so uh, what I recommend is if you didn't put something over top to come back every, mm, I mean like honestly immediately get up in the morning, it'll still be wet probably. And you'll be able to take like a toothpick or something and pick out the pieces of whatever his dust has settled on top. Um, so the answer is no, it depends on your space. How about when it's dry? Do we need to put something on it when it's dry to protect it? Great question. No, really. Um, if you want to last for a long time, you should probably put a coat of varnish on it. And what I recommend is usually the spray on varnish called Krylon. Um, it's archival, um, but it's like a $10 spray can. 
for something this small, eh, probably don't need to. Um, but if you're gonna put these up anywhere where it has direct sunlight on it, for example, then you really should. Um, if you are putting this where it's never gonna get direct sun, then you probably don't have to. Uh, resin on top is something you could do as well. That's more expensive and way more um, dangerous. So uh, yeah, only do that with parental supervision and um, do it the, like I, my resin setup, I'm literally wearing this the whole time. Um, which is why it's hard for me to make like YouTube videos on how to do it because the whole time I'm going, oh, I'm going to land a thing to a plane. Doesn't work so well. Um, you could, I could do a voiceover after, I guess, but yeah, that's, that's part of it. So resin is definitely, um, the, the fumes are carcinogenic in almost all of them. Um, they, it, it, it is, way harder to use you have a certain amount of time like i could repaint this and touch this up for hours with the paint that i have right now but with resin i have like anywhere from 15 minutes to 45 minutes and that's it right and once it's past that time it will start getting too viscous and it will start setting um and it will literally get hot because it's a chemical um it's a chemical reaction that's happening. So if you're gonna cover something with resin, that's another class for the future. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I actually love, like resin is one of my favorite things to work with. I absolutely love it. You can, uh, most of the things behind me have resin. Um, here, I will, I will show these as well. Um, this is the one that's probably the most interesting to look at right now. Um, like this piece, it, it's just a piece of wood, right? Um, I think it's technically MDF board, nothing, nothing uh, important. I put a hanger on the back, right? Um, but this is crushed glass and it has mica powder in the resin as well as a resin uh, tint called um, Casting Craft White which is uh, really good for making this cool lacing. So you can do some amazing stuff with it, but it's by far the most dangerous and um, you have to be the most careful when you're using it. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I just, I love the effects you get with them. So I'm careful. All right, all of my beach pieces that where you make the, the, um, the lacing of the actual waves, I think, which is, I think it's gorgeous. I just love that effect. Um, all of this is with resin. Where is, um, where is this piece? This piece is alcohol ink on um, Yupo paper, which is then adhered to the wood and has resin over top. And in the resin, I put some glitter to make the, the, sh the shimmery of the ocean. I don't know if you can see that so well. Yeah, yeah, nice effect. Yeah, so again, it depends on what effect you're going for. Um, I, I love the work, but each different medium has different um, problems and uh, things you have to think about, like alcohol, the alcohol will, dis will uh, evaporate from the ink in seconds, literally, right? So you have to constantly keep reapplying alcohol, which when it's like 99% um, isopropyl, you get the fumes from that. Right? So there are, what's that? You're talking to each other? Someone talk to all right. Okay. Other questions? Otherwise, we can wrap up for the evening. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. We had a great time. I love this. This is awesome. Thank you for coming. Thank you.
My pleasure. Thank you, everyone. On behalf of Piscataway Public Library, thank you, Mike Backwith uh, from Scene One Art. 